Hey, buddies, Potato McWhiskey here, and welcome to Civilization VI. I have a fun little idea here today that I've been brewing on for a while. In terms of mods for this game, we are playing with our usual UI mods, as well as a few gameplay mods. We'll be playing with JNR's Re-Civilized, which is just a collection of kind of semi-interconnected but not really kind of gameplay mods that are just like little tweaks to the game. And I thought it would be fun to actually check this out and have a look at it. This is one of JNR's older uh, pieces of work, but there are some really cool things in here and I thought it would be fun to check it out. We have uh, prehistoric hunting, which is giving us scout camps. We have stone rocks, open ranges, workable mountains for everyone, culture bomb for government plaza, oasis caravansary, ski resort complexity, and then three unique new buildings. I will try to put Rome, Japan, and Canada into the game so we can maybe get to see them use this. The scout camps are pretty simple. They make camps uh, slightly better in the early game, although that might have been, you know, they're like they get plus one food if they're built next to a river. Camps can be built by scouts who receive one build charge for it. So it's like these are like all very, very small little tweaks to these um, to these resources and gameplay mods. They're not they don't completely revolutionize the game. I just thought it would be fun to kind of try out a little pack of new mods and, you know, try them out, see what they're like, and, and, and try out the tweaks. Now, today we are going to be playing on Deity Difficulty, as our good old friend, Teddy Roosevelt, specifically Bull Moose Teddy, because I haven't really done a full proper game with the new Bull Moose Teddy. Let's do a standard map size, and I'm kind of feeling like it would maybe be fun to play a Highlands game. I haven't played Highlands in quite a while, and it's a map type that I really, really enjoy. And I think Highlands, it's safe to add an extra player. Because uh, it's quite it's quite a sparse map, so maybe even two extra players just to kind of fit into the map. Maybe that'll make things a little bit interesting in the early game. And to keep things interesting, I will add Canada, Japan, and um, Rome to this. Because they do get new buildings in this little mod pack. Other than that, I'm thinking we won't play with any game modes. Apocalypse can be kind of fun. I think I'm going to leave them all off. Barbarian's clans just like really imbalance the game. As A lot of these just kind of really heavily imbalance the game. As much as I love barbarian clans... Um, the sheer amount of city-states that can appear becomes a little bit problematic. Um, and we will play with barbarians today. Uh, no, I've been turning them off for a lot of my games lately. Um, but, you know, occasionally we have a few little modes and different ways of having set up and stuff like that. And I think that's kind of more fun. If you have a little bit of variety in how you play your games, you know, you're always doing the same thing over and over. It can get a little bit old. He says as he loads up another tourism game. <laughs> it's been a while. Listen... You know, I have no excuse. I'll just, I'll be honest. I, I don't, I just don't. So let's go ahead and jump into the game and take a look at this start location. Now, by any stretch of the imagination, this is not an amazing start location, but it's a pretty okay one if we turn on resources. Oh God, I forgot how to turn on resources. Uh, we have access to a decent amount of stone and it's buffed stone as well. We also have access to gypsum. We have some mountains, so there is potential here for a holy site if we so choose. And we do have workable mountains, so like a preserve next to these could also potentially be an interesting decision. Um, also campuses, like sort of that kind of gameplay is wide open in terms of appeal. I don't love the fact that we have quarries because the problem with quarries is that they lower appeal. Uh, you can see here, appeal to adjacent tiles minus one. Now, I'm going to be building at least one quarry on the gypsum, but it kind of pains me to harvest the stone. The good news is, though, it is a two food, three production tile, which is one of the best tiles you can ask for in the start of the game. And we're also settling on a plains hill, and we have a one food, three production tile for when we hit two populations. This is going to be a very high production start for us. Not a very high growth start, but definitely a high production start. Now, in terms of where my warrior is... The fastest scouting path, let's cover, so, so we're definitely towards the north of the map, so Canada is likely to be nearby. Um, so there's a few considerations there. Now, we definitely want to be playing around high appeal, so that's why I was kind of sad around the quarry stuff, because we're playing as Teddy Roosevelt, he gets um, extra science from, uh, he gets extra science and culture from high appeal tiles, right? For, uh, plus two science if it's adjacent to a mountain, and plus two culture if it's adjacent to a uh, woods tile. Uh, and all tiles in a city with a national park are plus one appeal. So we're definitely going to want to play around making sure every single city has a national park. Now, to build national parks, you need a lot of culture in order to unlock them, and then also a lot of faith to actually build the naturalist. So I'm feeling like this is going to be some sort of, in the early game, um, I'm, I'm currently, my thought is, it'll be some sort of, you know, holy site, maybe get triple holy site into, like, double preserve. 
um, is kind of like the opening strategy that I'm thinking about. Now, I, th- I think that's what we're going to do. And I reckon settling in place is the reasonable thing to do here because we're settling on a plains hill. We do have fresh water. We can't move anywhere that improves our tile yields. Theoretically, crossing the river will give us access to another two food, three production tile. However, we can grow to that very, very quickly and settling in place you know, we get to settle a turn earlier, we settle on a plains hill. This feels like a very, very reasonable place to settle. And because I settled there, I can actually move my warrior to the east through this flatland a little bit quicker. And I'm going to do that because warriors have trouble going over rough terrain. We have to make a decision about what our opening move here in terms of culture is. Uh, Sorry, in terms of construction is. I could, no, I feel like scouts are buffed in this mod. And information would be very, very useful. I could probably go double scout into settler into holy site. Um... Or even, mm, man, that's a tough one. <sighs> yeah, I feel like Double Scout into Settler into Holy Side is like a good opener. I could also go fast Monument if I wanted to get Early Empire even faster. Go for a fast Early Empire. Now, the real question is, do I have any... So, so it's breathtaking tiles. Now, breathtaking is four plus, unfortunately. And I don't have any breathtaking tiles around, which means I am missing out a little bit in some respects uh, for yields here. And that's going to sort of demand that I play in a slightly different way. I'm tempted to go for the ultra greedy Monument Settler Holy Site opener. It's a completely naked opener with no defense, but this is a relatively large map. And I feel like I might be able to get away with it. So I'm going to try this. This is an opener I uh, has only ever brought rack and ruin to me um, whenever I've done it. So I'm hoping that this might be the appropriate situation to break out that that opener. And I'm, I'm committed to the monument. I'm not so committed to getting the fast holy site. I don't, I'm not sure I super care that I get a religion this game. I possibly care about getting a good pantheon. Okay, there's fast meat on Rome is like probably one of the worst case scenarios especially because he's settling in my direction i will send him a delegation on the first turn that i meet him in order to try and improve my relationship with him but that's just unfortunate so he's continuing to settle in my direction i'm gonna just hang out here he's kind of bouncing back and forth which is kind of okay for me i'm gonna loop back our relationship is okay it's already at minus five right now so if we can if we can do some things to improve that relationship we'll be in fine a fine fine situation so our city grows next turn and our border will grow on the exact same turn. So we'll be working another two food, three production tile, which is perfect situation for us. This is like an extremely high production opener, which maybe opens up a little bit more opportunities for greed than another opener might. My appeal in this area is quite bad. I'm going to loop up now with my warrior and maybe get some information on this side. Maybe there's better appeal to my right or to my left. I kind of wish I did have a scout now. And I totally didn't mean to go mining first. I should have been going for astrology here. Um, but since I went mining first, a builder now, we're just going like the ultra greedy version of this play now where you go builder, settler. Um, and so I'll probably go tri- triple quarry here to get that extra three production out as well as boost uh, craftsmanship. So this is like, the, this is genuinely the greediest opener I've ever done in my life. And you know, here's to it working. <laughs> Because it could all, like, Rome literally, at this point, I'm playing such a greedy opener that Rome could actually just fart in my direction and I die. I do want a Pantheon, but this is such a greedy high production opener that I'm going to go for more production. We can get a, I, honestly, it doesn't matter if I get a bad Pantheon. It's not important. What is important is that I do get to early Empire and in particular preserves relatively early this game. Because I need to crack out two settlers. Ideally, with a production boost, maybe. Maybe I go double settler at the holy sites. I don't know, we're kind of... We're exploring the realms of possibility. The, the one really nice thing is because a Highland map has so much land that there's kind of more room to get lost, right? There's less there's less places that barbarians could pop up and cause me problems. Um, I am totally willing to settle in Tundra as America if it has enough forest to sustain me. I actually don't really like the builder lens with one of these mods. I'm going to go ahead and turn off the builder lens with the more lenses. I prefer, I, I can kind of manage terrain on my own. Like if you like the builder lens, it's totally unreasonable. Like you turn it on and it tells you there is a way if you come down and click on the builder lens, it'll show you like, oh, dangerous tiles. Here's a resource. Uh, hills, feature extraction. You know, you could do lots of really interesting things with the lens. I don't love it. It's not my favorite. I guess I'm just so used to playing without it that I can kind of play without it. Now we're in a slightly unfortunate situation. There is good appeal over here. 
and I can buy a really, really good quarry tile soon, but it, its appeal will be going down when I build my quarries, which is unfortunate. So Rome is a little bit upset with me because I don't have a lot of land, um, which is like, fair enough, Rome. Like, I get why you're upset with me, but also there's not really many opportunities for me to have gotten land right now. So I need you to chill out a little. Let's go ahead and pop in here. We grab the boost for archery. Not exactly a great boost to have, but it does mean that we can play a little bit more defensively and probably pick up an archer or two if Rome decides to come and kill us. Uh, we don't have a huge amount of warning on that. He has scouted us. And we got our another quarry. So now that's a 2-4 tile. Like a 2-4 tile in the early game. This is like incredible uh, levels of land quality that we're, they're cracking out right now. So the appeal isn't superb over here. But it's good enough to settle. It has fresh water. Uh, it has okay holy sites. There is trading abilities. Let's go ahead and buy... Another 2-3 tile, which I think is still a step up over this gypsum. Plus it has a little bit of science on it right now that we can take advantage of. And honestly, it might actually be better to leave this unimproved. Because two science right now, I think that's maybe worth a lot more. Well, no, I think the quarry is more, worth more than the science right now. Plus one production at this phase of the game. Over two science. Like, what does two science get me? I unlock my astrology a few turns sooner. whoop de doo Right now, I don't need science. I need production. I need to, like, I need to, I need to produce my way out of my greed, basically, is what I'm saying here. So we are going to put a quarry on that tile. And now the nice thing about how the appeal mechanic works is appeal actually doesn't reduce the appeal of the tile that you build the thing on. So by building the quarry on the high appeal tile rather than this tile, I actually get to keep the plus two science. I was debating whether or not to put it here, um, but I decided to put it there because I wanted to test if the appeal adjacency thing actually works. And it turns out it does. So we need to think about this is definitely getting improved with a quarry, which again, I hate because it's lowering appeal. It's an unfortunate reality. So appeal here is going to be suffering a few problems. Um, hmm. So we don't really have good land to do the thing that I want to do, which is use preserves and holy sites to build up a nice appeal for things because this tile is a bit of a stick in the mud as is this tile like if i were thinking i would like to place a holy site see i'd like to place a holy site here or here okay now it's important to remember holy sites also give adjacent tiles plus one appeal so i'm feeling like this one here is like pretty decent right there and then i got to think about like okay where are my Where's my preserve going? And maybe this is like an okay preserve. It's only a four tile preserve. Like it's only hitting four tiles, but it does boost a pretty decent national park right here. Cause I could eventually harvest these tiles and use this as national parkland. Um, and I, man, I really wanted like a, hmm. It feels just not high enough. Well, I guess when I get rid of that stone, the appeal here would go up by another one. I don't think I'm going to be building the preserve in my capital or the... So that's just going to have to be how we look at this analysis here. We want to look for somewhere else to build our preserve. Now, which of these four freshwater tiles do I want to settle on? It, it really depends on where I want to put my holy site here. I was hoping to put it on this T, but now there's T there. So that's like, that's annoying and unfortunate. Um, and you can't harvest luxury, so I kind of have to live with the T. Spiff trolling me again. Um, the land isn't really super conducive to what I want to do. Maybe the land to my east will be more conducive. I think I sent my settler on a scouting mission. It's a very risky thing to do, but it's also totally reasonable to do against the AI. This could totally backfire on me. Okay, this looks a little bit more like viable for a, um, a settlement of some kind. There we go. Okay, so we do have fresh water. We have a really good holy site. So like, mm, okay, so there's a holy site there or here, right? We could do both. A holy site can go here. I reckon we would want to settle on the fresh water. It's a question of do we want to settle here or here? Now, God, it's just like the positioning on this is just ever so slightly too awkward again to fit a national park here because the perfect place for the national park to go would be me to build a preserve here, right? Make use of all this high appeal land. Oh, that's annoying. One, two, three, four. National park in between these two cities. What if we did... Because did... I, I want to use the adjacency from my holy sites to help with the national park. That's, that's the thing, right? Because these give plus one appeal to adjacent tiles. So making use of that is like a good thing to do, no? 
Where am I getting good value for a preserve here? It's probably here. Okay, so if the preserve is going there, we want two tiles of the National Park to be adjacent to this. If we can, like, ideally. Which means this city just doesn't work where it is. Yeah, the, 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 the Tetris that I'm having to play here is just a little bit too, slightly too awkward, unfortunately. So let's instead look for the ability to trigger more plus fours. So I think, despite the fact that this holy site is only a plus two, I think it is better than this one because it'll make this tile into a plus four. And then, this is a plus five. Yeah, and then that's a plus two science tile. One, two, three, in range of this. So I think I settle, I think I've decided now, I settle on this tile next turn, and then we'll continue to make decisions from there. There's astrology, so we do have access to our holy sites. Boom, we settle in place, we delete the pin. What tile do we have available to work? Not really good tiles in here. Um, we might be able to buy like a three yield tile soon. So this is a very, very slow city. Um, and it wants to immediately start a holy site. I don't really have tiles I can improve in here. And my land kind of sucks. My land really, 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 really sucks, unfortunately. There's a good city here. What if I were to settle towards Rome instead of away from Rome? Let's, let, let's kind of analyze that instead. The positioning on this city is just so perfectly out of kink because what I want to do is... Like, I'd like a preserve here or here. It's just like these little puzzle pieces are like perfectly in the way. So that... Because like, I guess this one makes sense. But the problem is this... <laughs> Oh, that's so annoying. Well, I guess I could put a preserve here. Okay, so that's two holy sites, two preserves. There would eventually be a national park going here, owned by either of these cities. So that's good cooperation. And then it would probably end up looking something a little bit like this in the end game. Like there'd be a entertainment plaza with a, a, a theater square. So this is kind of the configuration that we're maybe looking for. Lots of really high appeal tiles all working together. So the only question now for this city is where is the holy site in this city going? And it's probably somewhere in these mountains. Like at the very least, it's going here as long as this tile is available because I, I can accept the plus two holy site, I think. Now, am I going for more early builders? Because I may, I may build a builder, chop out a trader and then work on my holy sites because I don't want to waste this chop. Although then again, I haven't really made enough science to make it worth it to waste to like try and preserve a chop. Maybe getting to set the, the holy site in six turns is worth it. Or do I, I think I go builder trader and I take the chop and then I go holy site. And my logic is here that this will help my newer cities catch up with my capital because the, the, the thing that's going to be holding me back from getting what I'm trying to do here let me, let me explain this a little bit more clearly. I'm trying to build three holy sites and then get two discounts on preserves because of the way the district discount mechanic works. So if I build these three holy sites really, really early, I'll get a discount on these two preserves when I go for them, which means I need to build up the power level of this city in New, Lo New Orleans. So it needs to start its holy site ASAP. Um, so I'm going to just get started on a monument in here and that'll eventually switch. Now, I forgot to give him a delegation, so... He has denounced me, which is unfortunate because I actually don't know where his cities are. He knows where I am. Okay, Rome has arrived. Uh, sorry, not Rome. The barbarians have arrived, which is concerning because of how greedy I'm playing. I've been scouted, but hopefully the barbs won't come for me, you know? Let's, uh, let's just, you know, close our eyes and pretend, you know, nothing bad is coming my way. So we're sending our scout out, straight out into the wilderness, completely blindly. Somebody got a new... So the first religion is gone. Fair enough. I, I'm not, it's not necessary that I get a religion this game. It's just nice if I do. So we're going to settle here. There will eventually be an aqueduct going there. Perfect. Perfect. Oh, I need masonry to harvest stone. Oh, that's really crap, actually. Um, yeah, that makes things a little bit unfortunate here. Because I wanted to start this holy site in the next like turn or two i can start this city's holy well i guess what this city can do is grab me a quick slinger because it does have a two three tile and a slinger would help me defend myself this city i'm going to go ahead and buy this tile and immediately begin the holy site right now or do i finish that monument i think the city can take its time a little bit because it will be getting a trader and the monument is a good return on investment oh that's a double horseman spawns really wow okay yeah, there's a reason I've started disabling Barbarians, because it's just like completely, um, it's so RNG whether or not you're going to get away with a greedy build. So incredibly RNG. 
<laughs> oh no. Oh dear. Um, for some reason, my super tax simple UI adjustments isn't working, so I can't check what tiles. I, I have that enabled, right? Oh, I must have forgotten that one. I'll have to re-enable it between episodes. So I'm going to harvest here to get that trader instantly. Teleport the trader to there. Try and like clear out this scout a little bit. This trader will trade with my capital. You're going to get me a quick archer, then a holy site. I'll place the holy site. I mean, it's four turns for an archer, which isn't bad. And I've got three cities. Let's go ahead. Now, this builder's job was to come over here and improve things like this stone. But it might actually just be to come here and chop this. Yeah, it's probably just going to be, I'm going to chop that forest. Um, I want you to trade with Washington. Your job is to give the city plus one food, plus one production, which is as if it's working another tile, which gives it a two food, two production tile, which is like a, a literal doubling of its current like tile yield. So this trader is key. So you need to retreat, unfortunately, because you will get killed by this horseman if I don't retreat you. It's not the horseman that'll kill you. It's the sack of horse archer behind it, because it'll just run up and shoot you after this horseman kills you. So we have access to early empire. Let's go ahead and pick up craftsmanship. Would have been nice to have that now because I could have built units faster, maybe. Um, I think urban planning is what we're leaving plugged in. And I'm going to be appointing a governor. It'd be nice to go for a zoning commissioner with Liang, maybe, to use her in New York to crack out these districts and also get better builders. Um, I haven't met any city-states. Magnus is okay, because I, but I've already chopped kind of everything I plan to chop here. Victor will give me defense. Pengala helps me get into the game. Moksha gives me a little bit of faith. Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Each one of these governors has, like, I feel like Pingala and Magnus and Liang are the three strongest to open with. Sometimes a Manny. Rarely Victor is, oh, I accidentally appointed Victor. Well, I guess he's going into New York. Uh, you know what? Sometimes you just misclick when you're trying to talk about things. That's life. Uh, I can go for Garrison Commander here and maybe that'll help protect me against early war, I guess. Seems like an okay thing to do. Now, you have to get into the city, unfortunately. But our greed is relatively unpunished. We're going to head to masonry now. Having access to walls would be pretty good. Our kind of, our kind of... Ooh, I forgot that they could move and pillage. That's a really uh, obnoxious thing. Oh, I'm really tempted to just restart. Um, but we're going to, we're going to suffer through because we know it's just like, I'm looking for a perfect, yeah, here comes the Rome attack. I knew, yeah, I knew this is, I knew this was coming. Here it is. Did anyone have any doubt? I'm so, I'm actually so glad I misclicked Victor now. Get this kill. How did you not get that kill? I am actually getting screwed by the game right now. I want the record to show that I'm getting screwed. I'm being dragged into a war that I don't want. My trader was murdered. Okay. My warrior survived at least. Let's harvest here to get that. Archer next turn. City is lightly defended. We need to get the state workforce ASAP. We will get another monument, I guess, which is kind of nice. And I guess the barbs are kind of buying me time. Slightly. Um, I need to get this warrior into the city and healing. Needs to happen next turn. So I can raise the city's combat strength. How much do I commit to this war? He's on 14 signs, so I'm on 7. I have a really high production city. I can create an archer every 4 turns. I currently have a few. I could make 2 more archers. And maybe see how this war goes. Because maybe I could push and take a city or two off of them. It's early enough that it could work. These cities aren't very high population. Rome is only three. Maybe he's weak enough to me, for me to kill him. Or at the very least, trigger some pillage gold. Because I'm actually well prepared for this war. Which is a rarity for me in my games. It's rare that I'm well prepared for an early war. Um, kind of helps that I'm playing America a little bit too. Can you get this kill? That's twice now you have failed me to get a kill. Um, and honestly, at that point, that would be like, you know, that would be you done. So I'm no longer fighting barbarians. I think I go full of Gog here. And we just go all in on the murder. And we just crank warriors and archers. And we just play super hyper aggressive with our warriors um, as we mass produce them. I think that's the thing to do here. Maybe we can topple Rome before they get uh, legions. Super dangerous. This is, a, this is like an incredibly all in strategy. And it honestly isn't conducive to a tourism game which is kind of what we wanted to do today. But it is also conducive as hell as having a, to, having a, to having a good time. Let's step forth gingerly with our archers. We want to kind of move forward, but also perpendicularly. And we want to also preserve units when we can. Like, there's no point sending this guy in. He's, I'm better off waiting like the two, three turns for him to heal. 
than to just send him in willy-nilly. Because my archers can do the majority of the work in the early parts of this war. Man, losing that trader is actually crippling my economy, sadly. I don't want to unlock riding, and I don't want to unlock currency. I really wish I didn't have to unlock state workforce, because it's going to ruin this plan. But this plan is already ruined. And I think unlocking state workforce gives me access to Victor readout ability, which will make this war a lot easier, I think. So let's go for wheel. Follow up heavy chariots are possible here. We have ourselves a Roman warrior. We step, we shoot, we step, we shoot, we step, we shoot. Get into that city to heal slightly faster. I think units heal twice as fast in cities. I don't remember what the healing rates are off the top of my head. So there's a city state that I'm fighting as well. I'm fighting the Vatican City. This warrior here should be a much easier kill. Let's rotate our unit. Column. One shot. A step. Two shot. Three shot. That's a dead warrior right there. You're going to heal. I bring my next archer up. I can afford to sustain one more archer and maybe go to six archers, honestly. Um, we're in a normal age, which is quite good. Let's take free inquiry. <laughs> Improve this quarry. That's plus one production for the city. Step and shoot. Step and shoot. Step and shoot. Step and step and run. I don't see any walls coming up, so I don't know if I need a battering ram just yet. I think I can I think I can outspam Rome here. Um, because I'm a human player and I have brains. A four-turn battering ram would ensure that I have a tool against walls. So he has two warriors here that are gonna be easy kills. Step and shoot. Step and shoot and shoot. Step forward. Step. Oh, I stepped the wrong way with him. That's okay. We missed a single sh city shot on Ostia. Um, now, I could harvest this for 32 production, but I think building it is more efficient here because this is going to be a long, grindy war. And this road honestly helps get my units to the front line, which is quite nice. This guy is basically fully healed, so I think he can join the front line now. So we can start to surround and siege Ostia. No peace for you. You, this is, this is vengeance for every single Civ player. Every Civ player who's ever been trying to do an interesting and cool build in Civ. And then the AI just like appears behind you and ruins it. Okay, that is, that is what we're doing right now. This is vengeance upon the AI. I am exacting righteous vengeance here for the people of the Civ universe. The people... <laughs> who have had the AI ruin their games so many goddamn times. Now, I'm going to take Garrison Commander here. That's going to give me extra loyalty here when dealing with this. And we'll have political philosophy soon. Because I am sick and tired of the AI. What is this, an encampment? He's trying to defend yourself. Entertainment conflict. You go for the Colosseum? You're crazy. Let's start blowing this city up with ranged attacks. So now if we move this guy this way and this guy this way, city is under siege. It's no longer regening. You have potentially a settler's deal here on the cards. Attack the city. Move. Potential heal. I don't care. Again, warriors are more expendable. I will keep them alive if possible, but they are 100% expendable here. They exist to control cities. Um, pillage for the heal, the heal. So this city will fall this turn. So instead, I want to move forward with as many guys as I can, which is one, and get damage on this guy while my back line slowly steps forward. Warrior take Ostia. We grabbed a builder, which will help repair that monument. And the nice thing is we are, we are grabbing cities from a player who starts with free monuments. So taking the city off him is like a significant win. Now the loyalty in here um, is minus 3.9, thanks to Magnus. I'm going to pop Magnus into that city, or sorry, yeah, Victor into that city. And now we have positive loyalty in here. Uh, and we should be easily able to move on to Rome. My battering ram is complete and on the way to the front line. Uh, we're going full warrior spam. I'm all in now. There is no, um, it's, it's, this is do or die. There is no retreat from this. I can't build eco behind it. I'm all in to this war. There's no way for me to get back into the game based on the situation that Rome put me in. Because I had such a greedy opener, I can't efficiently defend against Rome. If that makes sense. Because I, I just have to, because I've invested in military, I need to keep investing in military. Hopefully that kind of makes sense. I don't know how to describe it. Uh, let me see. Move an archer forward and shoot. You move forward. There's a spearman. Hopefully he, hopefully that spearman is dumb enough to see that he can get a kill and attack my sacrificial, um, my sacrificial warrior. And I have a one charge builder so I could get some, there's a lot of horses here. This is like an incredible amount of horses. Some of these warriors may never participate in the war, like being real with you. 
So he wasn't smart enough to see, or he was smart enough to see that I was debating him. It's always good to get units onto hills ahead of time. Let's get that pasture because it's a higher production. Warrior here, warrior here. Battering ram on the way, another warrior coming. Um, now... Am I done making warriors? No. I'm fully committed to this war. If I can win this war, then I'm in an okay position. But I think I don't have the choice to stop producing warriors. Maybe in my capital city soon. But I have to feel fully confident that I can beat him. Because look at his culture and science. He could pop out a really strong unit. And I need to be able to kill that unit by throwing wave after wave of warriors at them. Like I just need like things like these chariots, they need to be like just completely mobbed by a little uh, basic warriors. Warrior to the front line. Archers begin shooting. Now, this is where my front line gets a little bit clogged and it's hard to find room for everyone. But that's okay. I should also be looking for quarry pillages. Um, farm pillages aren't important for anything but healing, but getting a quarry pillage would secure me a pantheon. And I have battering rams in case he builds walls. Okay, he did build the wall, so we'll focus on unit attacks right now until the battering ram reaches the front line. Let's push our archer line deeper onto the city. I'm going to promote you with Battle Cry and you'll stay fortified. That's perfect. Battering Ram is two turns from getting to the city. I have another, I'm keeping the swarm of warriors up. So I do feel like the Battering Ram was a, well, <laughs> it was a good choice. Now my question is, am I going to now follow up with heavy chariots? They're slightly faster. I think I will start producing heavy chariots in my capital and leave the other two cities building warriors. We're chipping away at the city, slowly but surely. It will start to do damage to my archers, but I have so many archers in range now that I'm not scared for them. Let's step back this way, shoot the city. You step here, shoot that spearman. Shoot there. There's no point attacking with this warrior until next turn. Otherwise, we're continuing to damage the city's walls. The siege is slowly breaking. 15 turns on that city to flip. We have another three warriors coming in to supplement the front line. Um, and you'll be able to move to the front line now next turn. I would love to cross the river with you, but you're also where the battering ram is. So I don't know if we can justify that movement yet. And you're tanking. Yeah, the tanking is helping. Uh, let's think about our positioning slightly. I think I move my archers down the line again to open up space on this tile here for this warrior to join the front line. The battering ram joins the front line. I get the pillage here for 45 faith, which secures my pantheon. I continue to bombard the city, bringing down the health and fortifications. You're not ready to cross the river, but you will be. And then we continue the line of warriors pushing down the lane. Honestly, it does nothing improved over here, so I just don't care about this warrior. Just continue to produce warriors. This is such a, <laughs> this is such a tone shift in what I was supposed to be doing this game. So I got the monument in Ostia, which is slightly helping with the loyalty. Um, a granary would also help. Do you think I could sell any? I could probably get a little bit of money for my um, my horses here. Sell off six horses for one gold per turn. Seems like an okay thing to do. Now, a catapult is problematic. Not game ending, it's just problematic. So one of the big problems I'm facing now is the inability for me to cross this river um, and also follow up barbs. So I'm okay with this warrior dying because it will heavily damage the city's defenses and allow me to continue to bring up new warriors. I need to open up the ability for two warriors to hit the front line per turn. So we'll do that. Is it worth it to lose a turn to shoot to level up? I think so. I think I need to... F the, the timing on these, these barbs is like awful. Now, my Pantheon, I think I would have liked the bonus faith from Appeal, but that's, it was very unlikely I was going to get it because I never went for a fast Pantheon this game. But I can maybe get some value out of all these pastures here by plus one culture from pastures, or potentially, if God of Craftsman is still available, it doesn't look like it. Plus two faith from quarries isn't bad here either. It'd be a really good early game faith boost. Um, but I don't need early game faith. I need like a long-term, really strong boost from this. Camp production doesn't seem very important to me. Honestly, culture from pastures seems totally reasonable here. So I'm going to take culture from pastures. I have a, There's a lot of pastures available in this city of Ostia, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine pastures in this city alone. That's nine culture there. That easily makes the Pantheon worth it. Um, just alone. So as long as he can't spawn a unit every single turn, I'm fine. That's the threat here. This... 
do this maneuver. Both of you cross the river. You step forward. This warrior honestly doesn't scare me. I need to take the city's walls down. You're not shooting land units, so it's not worth it to promote you. I need those walls to come down. The walls are now down, which is perfect. So he's lost his city shot here. That makes my life a lot easier. The city is under siege, so it's not recovering health. I'm in a way stronger position than I was at the start of this turn. So I'm feeling pretty good about this. Probably going to lose another unit or two. Maybe get a promotion on this guy next turn. Maybe get him healed. The first chariot is out. It can come help the front line. I think this might be the last round of units now. Uh, he managed to get walls in the second city. Unfortunate. There's an argument to be made that I should have redirected to that second city and taken it out earlier. But that's fine. Now this warrior is a problem. As is this one. Throw yourself into that catapult. Cross the river. Cross the river. Throw yourself into the catapult. No, first shoot with you. Then throw yourself into the catapult. Throw yourself into the catapult. Okay, so now he just has a chariot inside that city. The Rome should fall in the next couple of turns. I just, I hate that these goddamn guys are around me causing problems. I think I need to continue to produce warriors because there are more Roman cities behind here. And I'm on a time limit here as to whether or not I can actually defeat Rome. I've literally done nothing but produce units from the second I was in war with Rome. And I'm still, like, not close to taking his capital. <laughs> oh, oh dear. Um... So I think the first thing to do is to soften the city with range units because that's damage that's for free. That brings the health of the city down. Then we look for good hits with warrior units. Boom. Boom. Cross. Move. Boom. There we go. We own the city now. Probably should have waited the turn to pillage for the reheal so we can hit Aquilia faster. Um, but we've taken Rome. We will keep the city. Loyalty in here. I don't know how this is minus 12. It absolutely should not be minus 12, but we're going to redirect um, Magnus to here. And now we've got Rome and Ostia under full loyalty. So we've managed to take two cities. We have a massive army. Aquilia is in reach. And we have the unit spam to maybe make it work. We have chariots arriving now. He's down to 13 science, so I've managed to cripple him back down to my level. And as far as I can tell, he doesn't have access to iron, although I don't have iron unlocked, so I can't fully tell. None of his mines have science. So as far as I can tell, he doesn't have iron. In terms of science, he's only one tech ahead of me. So there's still a window here where I can make this work. And all of this, by the way, this is only possible because I played such an early production greed build. There's no way this would work <laughs> in, any other, in any other universe would this work. Um, trying to think what would be the natural follow-up here. I don't have any money to upgrade units, so getting swordsmen would be a net downgrade. In fact, I think I'm committed to staying on this unit tech level. And trying to get infrastructure repaired so that I get passive culture and science from owning these cities to catch up. Okay, losing a unit to a chariot. I mean, it's a sacrificial chariot, really, because I'm going to step forward and shoot the hell out of it. I'm trying to nail a kill for myself and bring my own chariots down on Aquilia. We have a huge, huge, huge surplus of warriors and a deficit of archers, so I'm probably going to crack out an archer from my capital, maybe. Thinking about what I'm going to do with these builders, I think I need to clear out these barbs a little, as much as I hate to do it. This is an intense opener, dude. Ah, Aretium has walls and a catapult. That's a combo to make a man weep. Push into Aquilia, it's the least defended city. We have the battering ram at the walls. Remember what I said, endless waves of warriors will be thrown at Rome until I have taken everything from them. That is the plan I committed to. This is what we call the, um, the crab bucket challenge, okay? <laughs> Can I drag Rome into the dirt as fast as I fall? <laughs> okay, we have ourselves irrigation and we got political philosophy. Now, political philosophy actually opens up oligarchy for us, which makes this gives us a little bit of a power spike and gives us a chance to continue our war because now we can plug in conscription and have a GOG going and potentially have um, cavalry production cards plugged in too. Let's go ahead and do the Mitannii as well. So we're just full on military. Early, 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 early military. I'm trying to think about what I could do here to make a difference in this war. Let's go ahead and pillage there. Archer here. Archer here. You have a promotion. 
kill that warrior, step into that city. I have a three charge builder. Um, culture might get me into the game pretty well. Lots of horse tiles in here could also help out. I don't think repairing really does much for me in this area. Crossing the river helps. Shooting the city helps. Oh my God, he has more and more cities. Jesus H. Christ. It's fine. Let's just, let's just try to unlock catapults and maybe we can make this work. We'll see. We don't have the science now to sustain this war. We're kind of now beginning, right? We're kind of, our curve is starting to, to flatten. Um, and I don't mean in like the, the, the good way that we'd all been hoping for. Okay, so there's legions. Now, can I fight through legions? Honestly, if I, if I throw enough meat at this city, I think I can take it. I know that sounds like an absurd thing to say, but just throw <laughs> as much meat at the city as humanly possible. Um, and maybe we will succeed. Now, I do need to prevent this legion from getting into the city this turn. But next turn, he's going to one-shot this archer regardless. So we're trying to take the city and then attempt a peace out. Like I said, I'm on a time limit here. When I started this, I got to kill him before he gets legions and crossbows. If I can kill him before he gets legions and crossbows, we're in, we're in great shape. If I can't, you know, we got problems. Made the obvious kill. He actually failed to kill my archer, which is interesting. I never picked up military tradition. This is probably not helping me. All right, let's do damage to the city. Primary objective. Now we want to smash the walls. No more city shots for you. Okay. It's all looking kind of reasonable right now. You know, if the complete dissolution of your empire looks reasonable by any stretch of the imagination. Yeah, I think I'm committed. I think I'm committed. I, I don't think I can turn this around. I think I have to continue to fight him. Even horsemen don't help me here. I mean, they actually, they help a little. 36 combat strength versus 28. Five turn build. Yeah, they kind of help a little. They help a little. Horsemen, definitely a viable move. Speaking of horsemen, I need to put more, uh, <laughs> more of these pastures down. So a second legion complicates matters, but the legion isn't in the city. That's the important thing there. The legion is not in the city, which means there is a window here Again, if we're, 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 we're hashtag project meat, if we just throw enough meat at this city, maybe it'll work. Boom. Boom. That's the last guy. Last meat. Seriously? Are you kidding me? Maybe there's a very, very slim chance we can do it next turn. But I just burnt all my melee units on a, what should have been a, a free win, honestly. Okay, we take the city, we piece them out next turn. That's the goal. I think. Why is there only plus four combat strength from difficulty? I thought the DD AI gets six combat strength. Is there a mod changing that? Am I crazy? Do I misremember this? Oh no, it's always just been plus four. Oh, that's way, <laughs> that's way more reasonable than what I thought it was. All right, I'm feeling okay. My brain here is just misremembering things. Okay, the good news is the city is on near zero health. So now in theory, there's no way I lose this because my unit survives. Boom. I take the city. I keep the city. I talk to Rome. I say, hey, he seeds all of his cities. I pay him a little bit of money. Boom. We're at peace. Adios, amigo. No more war. And I've taken three cities from Rome at very little cost to myself. So let's kind of like do a little bit of an analysis here. We managed to take three cities off of Rome. There's, there's a lot of downsides to this position that we're in, but there's a lot of upsides too. We have basically crippled Rome from the game and that's an annoying and strong player still have super cheap builders we haven't we didn't we, we're, we're not getting a religion this game unfortunately but we took three cities from rome all of which have infrastructure that can be repaired relatively quickly it's all very very low appeal so it won't work with my strategy but this doesn't have to work with my strategy it i think we're in a very strong position we have an endless number of units we can use to explore and clear barb camps with to generate error score our military is relatively large and good for defense. I, I would call this a winning of a war. I've taken three of his cities and lost none. Only cost me very, very basic units. Technologically, we're in a terrible position because like an early war like this, like this is just crippling, right? 77, 35. I, I, I went for a really, really gritty opener and I got punished. But I think, I think this is a position that I can win from by current estimations. It's not ideal by any stretch of the imagination because I had to settle really trash cities. But I can definitely, like finally, maybe <laughs> do a little bit of like government plaza stuff. You know, I think I'm going to make Aquilia 
let's see. I I have to kind of do a little bit of like thinking about how I want to how I want to build up this land. One of these cities I think is going to be the um, provincial capital. It's going to be the capital of the of my new empire where trade routes are sent to. Maybe I'll do a little bit of internal trade in the early game. I'm not sure how I'm going to move forward, but goddamn, if this is an interesting opener. Um, we're on six cities at turn 70, which is like one city behind where I would like to be. We have no districts built, which is super behind. We have a relatively large military and we've weakened our strongest neighbor. He's still ahead of us, but we do have 10 turns to prepare for any potential war. I hate my position right now, but goddamn, is it not an interesting position? <laughs> or is it, is it, is it not? Wait, listen, words are difficult sometimes. I'm just, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go. I love you all very much and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.